mentioned the promos earlier. Some of the stuff that you guys have been doing, like it's so creative and it's different. Like like whether it's sitting around like a table playing cards or the thriller thing, like there are so many different things that you guys are doing. How does the creative process go for that? Like like I'm really interested in hearing that. Uh so I mean basically I wanted to start I I've been wanting to do stuff like this for a very long time, years even, because I remember seeing Joey Janela doing stuff at CZW uh, with um, a producer for CZW, John Carlo, who now works for WWE. Yeah, he's and great. Was, he's great. And um, he, uh, I was always like, John Carlo, I want to do something. I want to do something. I want to do something. But I lived in Ohio and they were all in Philly. So he would get with Joey, you know, they put out a few videos and they were fucking great. All of them were great. And then, you know, all these years later, I, I always have these ideas. I always write them down. And I'm just like, you know what? There's a pandemic pandemic going on. I'm not going to be traveling as much. Like, fuck it. I'm just going to do this. And so Atticus, who uh, he edits all of our videos and, and he shoots all of our videos. So basically, I'm like the director and he's the, he's the editor. And I come up with the concept. I'll take it to him. He might give me a few ideas here and there. Then we film it. Then he edits it. And then I'll watch it. And then I'll be like, no, nah, change this, change that. Sometimes the other guys, Eric and Eddie and them, they'll give us ideas as well. And like, we just kind of, I don't know, we just come together on it. But most of the time, I just try to find something that there's like a general theme that may or may not have to do with the show. And then I try to stick with that. But also, I leave, I try to leave little Easter eggs in the videos. Ah. So like, there's one, um, I think it's the Nate Webb one. It was before Eric Ryan joined. Um. I walk downstairs by the pool table and I walk next to this um, dartboard and there's a picture of Nick Gage like hung up on the dartboard. Um, well, a lot of people, only a few people caught this, but there was a fork holding up that picture. Uh, so that was just like, cause I knew Eric was going to join and I just, so I was like, Oh, I'm going to put this in there. And like, no one ever really clocked it. And then once Eric joined, they were like, Oh shit. Like I think like two people like tweeted at me and was like, Oh, this was great. So there's like little hidden stuff in the videos too. So I try to have like everything tell a general story. And if you watch them back to back, I would hope that they would like make sense and things. Um, but yeah, some of them are just fun. Like the thriller one, I was like, it's Halloween. I'm going to get Dan Housen to do this voiceover. I'm gonna, <laughs> yes. I know somebody who can do zombie makeup. Like let's f- to go into the cemetery across the street from my house and like film. Then, you know, who doesn't love thriller? Like it's fucking thriller. It's, it's so amazing. Like- yeah, so like I, some of them are just like fun, and I think they're cool. And that wasn't um, something I expected was seeing that, and I saw it, and I was like, "This is dope." Yeah. So uh, I, just, like, I just think it's cool too, like because we have such like a um, a platform with like IWTV and fight and stuff, mm-hmm. and that like I'm sure these people are dying for content to put on their streams. They yeah. don't want to just have wrestling because that gets boring. So I'm always like, "Hey, you know, IWTV, I have this play this." at this time during the show and then i'll release it online later you know so a lot of the promos if they have if they're iwtv sort of ones they, they they they'll air on the stream before i even put them online just i don't know just trying to give people extra incentive to watch shows and stuff like that would you ever want to get into the production end or the creative end of things like that like even if a, if a WWE, AEW, ring of honor impact were like hey man we'd like to use some of this your your mind creatively is that something you'd be into 100 percent um I, I love doing that side of it. And I know that in ring doesn't last forever. Um, this year is my 20th year wrestling. So uh, yeah. Um, so uh, I would totally love to do something backstage, help put people like uh, to be an agent, a producer, a trainer, anything, or just on the production side of it. I, I mean, I would love to learn more about filming and things like that. Cause I really don't know technically the things I just kind of like, if I can't figure something out, I YouTube it or Atticus figures it out or I'll ask somebody. I'm like 100% self-taught. I could kind of use Photoshop and kind of use Premiere. That's about it. Um, but yeah, I would love to do that stuff. I, I, again, I know that my in-ring career won't last forever. So I would love to have like a backstage job like that and uh, be able to help in any booking, filming promos, like anything. I, I just want to work in wrestling. You mentioned that you've been in it 20 years. Do you have an in-game insight or are you just like, whenever my body tells me, it'll tell me? Um, I used to have like, when I was younger, because I started when I was 17, 16, and I would be like, oh, when I'm 30, I'm done. Like, and Then I hit 30 and I was like, ah, nah, I'll keep going. And then I was like, oh, when I hit 20 years, I'll be okay with retiring. <laughs> and now that's happened. And I'm like, ah, I could... I don't know. I could know I could make it to 40. And now you know PCO's I mean? winning the ROH title at 51 yeah. years old. And it's like, well, Ex- 
exactly <laughs> exactly so I, i'm gonna keep going until it's time until i'm ready or my body straight up gives up but i think i'm doing fine for now but like i said i was i want to try to set something up in the industry that i can do and continue to help whether it be at an AEW impact or, or ring of honor or anything like that or starting a small independent when i'm done and, and and having a school and just trying to teach people the right way to to, to wrestle and how not even to wrestle but to to understand the psychology of like a whole show and the business end and like not being selfish and like you know not doing every move under the sun to get gift like i i constantly <laughs> anybody any of the young guys that are on shows with me they can't they know that i'm i seem like a bitter old fuck but i'm really like trying to help yeah like I, I want everybody to make money and everything to be good and every everything like wholeheartedly everything to be good and and uh so it, I think it comes off. I, I feel I, I feel like I come off as like a crotchety old man. But <laughs> I mean, you could give me a quote about wishing that guys in the locker room still had guns and stuff. I mean, that did pretty well on the internet this week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> you could do- I mean, I, I'm not saying that. Like, I love, listen, have a gun or have a Nintendo Switch. I don't care. But just wrestle, right? That's all yeah. I want. Ricky, I Ricky Shane to... Page says he misses pills and guns in the locker like, room. Well, I miss it. <laughs> just I miss like matches going there, like their corrected times. I miss people not doing <laughs> each other's finishers. I miss you know whatever. P- it, nobody communicates to each other in the locker rooms anymore. Like it's just kind of like a well, I gotta I gotta get a gift. 